Indian River County is home to one of the most biodiverse ecological communities in the world. Many important ecosystems exist right here in this area of Old Florida Charm. In this episode of Uncovering Indian River, we'll visit some very special spots that seek to preserve and promote the unique ecological offerings of this area. Our next stop is the Environmental Learning Center. Today, Mark will be taking us on an edible plant walking tour, which is one of the many activities the Environmental Learning Center provides to help connect people to nature. So the question is, why do we do these edible plant field trips here at the ELC? First of all, it's just fun to know what you can eat and smell and taste. Uh, you can gain an actual better understanding of our natural history and the natural environment, but just taking a closer look how these people live and directly obtain their food and medicine uh, from the land they lived on. So what we have here is strangler fig. Ficus aurea grows in coastal areas, and Native Americans actually use them quite a lot. They produce uh, teeny tiny fruits. What's seen as the fruit is actually a flower, but they're edible and they're quite tasty. How many plants do you typically see on your whole tour? We have about a little more than 200 species here uh, in just this general area because we're here in the middle of an ecotone. So we have plants from um, salt marsh and mangrove forest, as well as from coastal uplands. We have at least four species of salt marsh plants here. They're very typical in, in this area and all of them are edible. So what we have here is three very common salt marsh plants. The first one here, Batis maritima or salt, salt wort. Just take a leaf. Just take one, just, just eat it. Just, just take a leaf. leaf. <laughs> Try it. A little salty. It's hard to describe. It's not bad, it's actually really good. Try this one here. Glass wort. Take yep. a little part off. Perennial glasswort, saliconia. That's really good actually, it is salty. It is very salty, yeah. So at the end of the tour, we always end here at the Welcome Center, and I usually serve some of the plants that we saw on campus. First thing here is Japan holly tea that I made for you. Japan holly is the um, only plant in, on the American continent that actually produces caffeine. Just like here, we have sable palm, heart of palm, uh, makes a really good addition in salads or on the grill. Let's try it. <laughs> it's really good. I had a great time with Mark on the edible plant walking tour at the Environmental Learning Center. If you're in town, be sure to check it out. Interestingly enough, the Indian River isn't really a river at all. It's an estuary and lagoon of brackish water wedged between Florida's eastern barrier islands and mainland. As a cradle of refuge for many species, the barrier islands create a safe space for the ecological growth and development of many different plants and animals. One of our favorite animals that take refuge on the Florida coastline are sea turtles. Coastal Connections provides opportunities that support environmentally conscious behaviors while educating tourists and locals alike. Kendra and her team seek to educate the community and actively support the preservation of turtle habitats with conservation initiatives. Today I'm here with Kendra Cope with Coastal Connections. So what inspired you to start Coastal Connections? Actually, I've always had a love for sea turtles ever since I was a little girl. At a family vacation, I was snorkeling and a turtle came right up to me and it was the most majestic thing I'd ever seen. And it inspired me to become a marine biologist. I realized that there was such a need to involve all people in this incredible story of their recovery. Sea turtles are considered a keystone species. If it was to disappear, the ecosystem would crash below it. They help regulate our oceans and keep nutrients flowing. As they move around in their ocean environment, they're spreading and mixing all of these really cool nutrients and providing a lot of vital nutrients to this beach so that we can feed our dunes. And when our dunes are healthy, our plants are growing. And when they're growing, our buildings are protected. Can you tell me a little bit about this nest here? So just like you and I, if we start walking, we're gonna leave little footprints behind us. And those tell us signs that someone was here. And turtles are no different. They're gonna leave very unique tracks in the sand. And then all of our team are trained to be able to notice if she left a nest behind. And if she did, we'll put stakes around it just like this, make a protected area. And then we know to watch that every single day during the two month incubation period. That's a really interesting process for conserving turtle nests here on the Treasure Coast. So you also have beach baskets. A beach basket is a tiny little grocery basket that's at, right there at the beach access. 
that you can grab and do your own cleanups. That is something that we provide at every beach park in Indian River County, St. Lucie County, and really we're working on getting those available across the entire Treasure Coast. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us here yeah. today. Thanks. For our last stop, we have something super interesting for you. We'll be meeting with Mary Lou and Sam of the Rare Fruit Council. So what is the mission of the Rare Fruit Council? We really put it together as a way to learn from each other. Some people know about bees and some people know about growing soil. Some people know about uh, mangoes and grafting. And so we just wanted a forum for people to come together and learn from each other. Uh, now there are people that we don't even know that are on the Facebook page, like 400 some people. It's like the more the merrier. So it was just kind of an idea to get together and talk about stuff we love. What are some of your favorite rare plants that you grow here? Some of the more rare things that we have that really don't do well in this environment. The durian, which is the king of fruits in Asia, and uh, the purple mango scene, which is the queen of fruits in Asia. Uh, Mary got some cacao seeds, so that's a couple of things that we have going on. You have so many different types of plants here. How many do you have and how do you take care of them all? So we have, I want to say it's around 280, and it's a labor of love. We're out here almost every day, so it's, full -time it's, job. it's a full, yeah, it's almost like a full-time job. When we have time, we come out here, but we come out here r roughly on a daily basis. What are some of your favorite things that you make with these plants in your backyard? Well, Mary makes a really great beverage called sorrel. We make mead with the honey that we get from the bees. Mary makes a lot of pies, a lot of things that, you know, you can cook with, that you can bake with. Once you find out how much better food can taste when you grow it yourself, uh, it's it's kind of hard to go to the store and, st and buy a banana or buy something that you can grow yourself and that's going to taste better. What are some of the events that you put on and how can you get involved with the Fruit Council? We have a speaker series. We bring people in to talk about everything from survival food to eat the weeds to even gardening. We also have garden tours where we come into yards like this or members invite us in and we get to see what they're growing and what they're doing. We have the plant swaps and the tastings and that kind Kind of thing. The more we grow and learn from each other, the level of knowledge in this area will, will expand. Yeah, it's like a good community of plant lovers. Yeah. Basically. Yes. Basically. So thank you so much for having us here today. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Wow, what a fantastic episode with some of our natural treasures of our coastal community. Come visit and learn more for yourself.